tears aren't coming. The tears just aren't coming. Uh, just to be clear, it looks like he's dead or he is dead? It just looks like he's dead. He's got, like, blue paint on him or something. But he's going to be fine. What is wrong with you? Doctor! Welcome back to Thinking Critical. This is Wes, and wouldn't you know it, I, I was wrapping up shop for the evening. I got my DC Comics update video, got another update on the layoffs video, all lined up, ready to go the next two days. And I get the big news that there's even more DC cancellation. So your information regarding Aquaman being canceled and the punchline one shot and Dark Knight's death metal being 24 issues, that'll, that'll come tomorrow. And then on Sunday, we'll do the DC Comics layoff update video. That I'll be waiting for you. But today I got to talk about all these cancellations. And it's too bad. It, it is sad. But it does appear that what we were kind of expecting that later in the year, around November, December time frame, they were going to start cutting a lot of titles to coincide with the end of Dark Knight's death metal. And I do think we're going to see some of these comics that have been canceled around that November time frame get relaunched in January with new creative teams following the events, the, the final events of Dark Knight's death metal, which would kind of be Maybe like a soft reboot, maybe a big hard reboot for DC Comics moving forward. This also kind of coincides with them culling the staff. We know that there were just a lot of layoffs. They are evaluating the creators over at DC Comics right now. Like I said, you will get a full update on that on Sunday with Comics by Perch. But here I'm, I'm flying solo. There's no one for me to talk about. But I do want to say before I get into the details of all the cancellations from DC Comics, if this is your first time visiting or if you've been coming around but haven't taken the leap, there's not a better time to subscribe to Thinking Critical YouTube than right now. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give me a big thumbs up. If you don't enjoy the video, give me a huge thumbs down and let me know in the comment section below. Either way, I like hearing the feedback, and I would appreciate that. Now, getting to the cancellations, this did just come out, likely coinciding with some of the information we're getting about the November solicitations with DC Comics. First, I'm going to read the article from Newsarama.com. And then I'm going to give some quick thoughts on some of the titles that are being canceled, maybe why they're being canceled. You know, do I think it's a good move or a bad move? Uh, information like that, and we'll wrap it up. This shouldn't be very long. So here's the article from Newsrama.com. Following the cancellations of Batgirl, Batman and the Outsiders, and Justice League Odyssey in October, more DC titles are scheduled to get the axe in November. DC's just-released November solicitations reveal that Teen Titans, Young Justice, Suicide Squad, Hawkman, and John Constantine Hellblazer are all ending in November, with a cryptic message about Aquaman that makes that title's fate questionable. The Batman's Grave and Metal Men limited series will also reach their planned end in November. Teen Titans is the longest-running title on the list, with a new creative team, Robbie Thompson and Javier Fernandez, recently joining the title with issue number 39. Now the only Teen Titans left are Crush, Kid Flash, Red Arrow, and Roundhouse, reads the solicitations for Teen Titans number 47, the series' final issue. Meanwhile, Brian Michael Bendis is joined by artists Scott Godlewski and Naomi co-writer David F. Walker for the finale of Young Justice, marking the first Wonder Comics ongoing title to end since the imprint relaunched. Like I said, this is all breaking kind of right now. Not a lot of information to digest really in that article, but I will talk about some of the titles. And the big one that just, it breaks my heart to see it go is Hawkman, from writer Robert Venditti. If you're a fan of the channel, if you've been here for a while, you know that is my favorite comic book writer, and his work in Hawkman has absolutely been spectacular. The first 12 issues are one of the most moving comic books that DC has produced in the last five or six years. I would say it's the best comic book that DC produced at all, period, bar none, in the 2018-2019 time frame. It was absolutely spectacular with Brian Hitch on the art. After issue 11 ended, he did depart. There was an just a fabulous issue 13. It was kind of a one shot. And then it kind of got sucked into the year, the villain stuff that, that they were doing kind of line wide that really just killed the momentum of the title. Unfortunately, Hawkman never really was a big seller despite being absolutely spectacular. As far as DC comics, ongoing offerings, it was absolutely the best. It was one of the two or three best comics in the entire industry there for quite a while. And uh, like I said, Year of the Villain just kind of killed its momentum, never really got back on, on track, but Hawkman definitely deserved better sales and a better fate, but when you have so many titles, it's hard to get marketing promotion out there, and just, there just wasn't enough awareness of how great it was. The other title that really kind of breaks my heart is Teen Titans. 
It's been going on since Rebirth, but it did have a, a creative team change. I think it was on issue 23. It was right around there. It was Adam Glass, and he changed up the entire lineup, and it was awesome. He did such a good job with it. It felt like an homage to the new Teen Titans back in the 80s. Obviously, the team members were different, but it felt like that kind of team dynamic. You had Damian Wayne as Robin, Kid Flash in there, Roundhouse, Dejin, Crush, and it was really cool. Like I said, it, it felt like a an homage to the to the new Teen Titans, one of the greatest runs of a team based comic book in the history of comics, and it was fantastic. Hate to see that one go as well. Although Adam Glass did just leave the title, Robbie Thompson did take over. I think he's going to be a showrunner on like a Netflix series or something like that. So I can't really begrudge him moving on. But if you want to check out a great Teen Titans run, go check out the, the, the run that he had on it. It was absolutely fantastic. Another title that didn't sell as well as the quality really it deserved. It, it was such a good series. A couple of them that are kind of surprising to me are Suicide Squad by Tom Taylor and John Constantine Hellblazer. Those are recent additions to the DC Comics uh, universe. I think Suicide Squad is within the first 10 issues, and I think John Constantine Hellblazer are as well. Those, was, was, I think, launched early in 2020. Tom Taylor's a big name right now. Deceased is doing great. You know, he's obviously the guy that behind the comic book adaptation of Injustice that, that was also a big hit. And uh, it feels like DC Comics has a lot of faith in him. I have been told Suicide Squad was really good. I didn't personally jump on board because Generation 5 was supposed to happen and it felt like everything was going to get rebooted, which it feels like it is being rebooted. So I was like, why would I go and invest in a comic that's going to be out for like 12 issues? So I didn't jump on board. John Constantine Hellblazer, unfortunately, is associated with the Sandman universe, which is on Black Label, but I don't know. When they launched Sandman universe under Vertigo initially, it was the Vertigo revival, and it, I feel like it just got tainted with the stink of everything that, that Andy Corey and Mark Doyle were doing with all the oh, the other stupid woke books with Border Town, Goddess Mode, all that crap that just, just stunk up the room and just killed off the Vertigo brand. They moved Sandman universe over into DC uh, Black Label. Obviously, sales on John Constantine and Hellblazer aren't good enough, or they're rebooting the character to take place within the mainline DC continuity. We've certainly seen him in Dark Knight's Death Metal, so maybe he will be playing a, a more key role moving forward. Of course, we've also seen him in a Justice League Dark as well. The last one to get the axe is Young Justice. Brian Michael Bennis you know, relaunched that with Wonder Comics. I read the first issue. It was a Brian Michael Bennis comic book. It was full of words, and nobody had any character. And Of course, it was teenagers, so it was written even worse than you would expect, and uh, I had no interest in coming back. Young Justice is, is huge as a cartoon. There is a built-in audience for that comic book. Brian Michael Bendis was absolutely the wrong choice to relaunch that series. Uh, he's not good with team characters. He's awful with it. The only one that sort of worked out for him, I guess, is Naomi, and they canceled her series so she could go over and take the spotlight in, um, in Action Comics and then, I, I believe, in um, Young Justice as well. So I guess it didn't work out for him. So. Not sad to see that one go. I think they should probably just wipe out the entire Wonder Comics line and Bennis's name on all of it and stop giving him so much stuff to work on because I think he cannot handle the writing the two Superman books that should be the his focus, let alone managing an entire imprint and writing anything else like events and stuff like that. He's just he's been just an absolute failure at DC Comics. But I've talked enough about Brian Michael Bennis here on the channel. I am very sad. I hate to see these comics go. It does feel like DC is. We, we kind of anticipated kind of relaunching, retooling the line after Dark Knight's Death Metal. Obviously, they do have the layoffs going on right now as well. From what I understand, the creators are being evaluated, and they're probably going to lose a few of those. Don't think this has anything to do with that quite yet. Of course, it could. You know, we haven't got all the details. Hate to see Hawkman go. Hopefully, Robert Venditti gets an opportunity with another great character to really reinvigorate the character and add some life to it and really flesh them out like he did with Hawkman, like he did with the Green Lantern Corps. He's done so many great things at DC Comics. Hate to see Teen Titans go as well, but Adam Glass has already left, and it, you know he was starting to lose the magic anyway. Very surprised Suicide Squad, John Constantine, Hellblazer being canceled. They're very early in their release, and uh, you know Young Justice should have been a bigger deal. They picked the wrong creator. Uh, that'll do it today, folks. Uh, sad news. Like I said, tomorrow after Comics Aficionados, there will be another DC Comics update with some with some more news stories. And then on Sunday, we will do an update 
about the layoffs. Both of those videos will be with Perch. So uh, thank you for joining me today. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. If you, if you thought I if you thought I stunk up the room, like I said, give me a thumbs down. And uh, hopefully you'll be joining us on the Comics Aficionados live at 10 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the, the creators who define eras, you know, the Golden Age, Bronze Age, Silver Age, Modern Age, all that stuff. And uh, we're going to have a great panel. And hope to see you there. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.